Hi everybody. Okay, so um, before we get started, hands up anybody who knows what UX is. It's kind of on the screen, so don't look at that. <laughs> Who's ever conducted any user testing in their business or their agency? Okay, good. So I've tried to just cover off a few things that I hope will kind of inspire and inform people um, just to kind of get us understanding what UX is and kind of how accessible it is and how we can use it to even maybe like prove our ROI or kind of make decisions in our business. <coughs> um, there is a difference between UX and UI. User experience and user interface, they're often confused as being one and the same, but they're kind of part of the same picture. So my user experience is kind of every touch point within a business from making a phone call and speaking to customer service to how I place an order online. And the UI is really actually the thing on the website and it's the interface that enables me to do that and that's the bit that kind of affects conversion. <coughs> and I think there's a misconception as well that UX is something that's really time consuming um, and that's very expensive and that's actually inaccessible. But what I want people to think about after today is everything that they've actually got already um, tools within their disposal and maybe some new things that they can also try. <clears throat> so UX not being just A to B but it being holistic is kind of what I was talking about before. The, the fact that it's every single touch point with your relationship with your customers and it's not just whether or not a button is in the top left hand corner and whether or not it's red on a website. We want to be thinking a little bit about every way that we interact with people and how we help them to kind of move through their journey on our website. <coughs> When I was looking for UX quotes, <clears throat> I actually found this, and it was Albert Einstein's quote. So really, whenever I start talking to people about um, what they want to achieve via their website, or that maybe what they want to test, and, and what they want to achieve with their kind of um, UX solution, we kind of have to start at the beginning, start even earlier than testing, and actually start kind of at the planning um, in the, oh my God, start earlier than the testing phase, and actually start with tracking data. So the first thing you kind of want to ask yourself is are you actually tracking the current activity on your website and is there more that you can be doing to gather insights and information before you go to somebody and say, I actually think I want to restructure this whole page or I actually think I need a whole new website or I want to create an app because that's what my audience wants. You've got so many tools that you can access already to start building up a profile of the people that you're talking to. But before you even do that, you want to ask yourself a question and you want to ask yourself, what does good look like to your business? Your UX strategy has to be aligned to your overall business strategy and your overall business goals. And we work with a lot of people actually that have um, sales teams in house. So they may have a typical kind of sales strategy and sales model. And there is a direct alignment with that kind of sales model and how you move people through that funnel. And also how we then look at tracking um, and UX testing and building audience profiles and personas and things like that. So this is an example, um, and I believe this will all be kind of shared later so I can give you a template for this. This is an example of the type of things that you should be looking at when you're tracking goals and right through to what the KPIs and the targets are within your business. It's okay for you to say that um, your bounce rate is actually 48.9% because in your industry, that might be good for you. There's no point in saying you're trying to achieve less than a 15% bounce rate if actually that's just not applicable to your business. And the same with the level of inquiries. So for instance, this isn't an e-commerce business. So we're not looking at hundreds of thousands of orders every month. What we do want is five good quality leads. But what we have to understand is, this is how we're trying to kind of sell to people and we can track all of this data um, and this is actually how we get people to kind of move up the funnel. So all of this is building your sort of audience profile and helping you to understand what you then might start to test um, in UX. So if we actually look further through to, sorry, engagement and um, tracking tools, all of these, I'm not teaching you anything new necessarily within this slide, but I guarantee that you're underutilizing your analytics. I think Tag Manager is an absolute kind of hidden gem within a business. So within our analytics, we need to make sure that we're kind of tracking um, goals and that we've got the right funnel set up and that we actually understand that we want to be tracking this inquiry form because it's going to be higher value leads as opposed to why are you tracking your recruitment form on your website and, and what does that actually mean to the bottom line and to kind of your business strategy? 
hot jar as well is something that's free for you to use um, at a basic level. Then there's a paid version, and I'll show you what you can get from hot jar in a second. And hot jar is something that we love in our agency because, again, before we've even got to the point where we're looking at kind of prototyping and things like that, we're already saying, well, this is what the current behaviour is on our website. Hotjar has a, um, a more enhanced version, which you can pay for, but I think anybody that's a non-profit, and if you know anyone that's a non-profit, they can get the full version of Hotjar for free. Now, within Hotjar, you get things like this, a heat map. So we can actually understand whether or not people are travelling down and looking at the information that you've got at the bottom of your website. If you're a service-based website, this is so valuable. And actually, if you're an e-commerce website and you're purchase button is at the bottom then obviously we need to understand what people are currently doing before we start prototyping and testing whether or not we should kind of change it. We also get click maps as well. This is really good when we have things that look like they should be accessible or they should push you further on within your journey and then actually we discover that someone's rapidly clicking on something and it turns out it wasn't even a button it might have been an image. Um, then you also have pop-up surveys, surveys in Hotjar. There's so much that it can do. So you know the little questionnaires that pop up and say to you, um, is there anything else we could kind of do for you today? This kind of like always inviting feedback type of scenario. I've had experiences where on an e-commerce website, it was a tools website, we had a pop-up on there um, that was really just to say, did you find everything that you were looking for today? And people will naturally tell you if they've had a bad experience on the site and they'll sometimes feed back and say, this was broken, I didn't like this, um, I actually got here and then I couldn't find what I wanted because part of the navigation disappeared and our users are actually quite clued up. So give them that opportunity to give that back to you so that you can then sort of implement it um, in changes. You're not making a change and going to your director and saying, I want to spend a thousand pounds to revamp this part of the site because I think it's a good idea. It's actually um, qualified and backed by insight rather than just a hunch. Now, I mentioned earlier as well about um, UX being perceived as something that's inaccessible. It's like a, it's a bit of a big scary word. Everybody was like, what does it mean? We've already proved that with all the tools that you have as part of your normal website, you can track data and information. But you can also look at Gorilla UX and just going out there and actually kind of talking to people. There are research tools that you can use, and some of these have like free versions where you can just do like a one-off test. But you've got people within your organization that you can talk to. You've got, if it depends on the size of your business, if you're a small business and you want to conduct UX, you've got friends, family. Obviously, within our agency, we've got a wide sort of um, members of um, a wide sort of like team that we can actually go to. But these are some specific tools like user testing, highly recommend it. You can literally send someone to a certain part of your website and get feedback without having to organize hours and hours in a room with people. Um, and then you've got surveys. What does it take to create a survey and actually say to people, can you give me some feedback and be specific on this part of the site, literally just on this page? And then as we move through, we start thinking, OK, this was the feedback and how do we kind of implement changes? So just kind of a recap, the most important thing is figuring out what good looks like for your business figuring out what your goals and your KPIs are and aligning them to kind of your business strategy. Um, and then through that early phase, you know, understand how much of your website people are using, um, what could you possibly change to kind of improve that conversion. Um, and then just think about if you're, not most, if you're not the most skilled person to kind of analyse this data, maybe that's something that you can either outsource and start to bring people into. Because the more skilled you are, you can come to sort of conclusions and make recommendations and start prototyping. But if not, you can start collaborating with people as well. Prototyping doesn't have to be laborious. It doesn't have to be difficult. It should be rapid. You should have an idea, put it down on paper and thrash it out either amongst your team or if you're not part of a team, it could be part of your kind of wider business network. There are some great free tools out there. The one at the top is one of my favourite. It's so easy to use. I've seen it cited at two different talks at um, Brighton SEO as well. So I kind of think if it's good enough for like their main stage and it's good enough for me to kind of use on a daily basis. As I said, it should be agile and low cost. 
and the type of things you can create look like this. I think this is professional enough to create from a free tool. And through this, we're able to actually say, well, do you know what? I've got an information-based page on my website, but I think I need a call to action button at the top because my hot jar heat map tells me no one scrolls to the bottom. I want to lift it up. But before I spend thousands of pounds on it, and before I go to my web agency and ask for that, we can actually start having really intelligent conversations. And this is all user testing on a small kind of agile scale. And then just to prove to you, if you actually go to this link, I created a prototype that literally took me about two minutes. So I'll pop that up afterwards, you can have a look. Literally, the, there's an app that I referenced before, it's called Marvel. If you're thinking of adapting your mobile experience or creating a, mo a mobile-based app, because obviously most of them are, you can thrash out ideas by just literally sketching them and drawing them and then just taking pictures of them and then making it all interact and link. And it's such a better meeting to go and talk to like a, a board of directors or whoever it is that you've kind of got to talk to and say, but this is it in almost real life. I know it's not branded, but this is so easy to do. And then you can continue to kind of have those intelligent conversations. And to kind of help you out, we've got some more audience testing tools. This is where it starts to possibly become more expensive. The tools that I gave you before help you to kind of like prototype and things like that. And you would come to anybody that's kind of building your site and say, well, actually, I've got these ideas. And this is the type of thing where it gets to be extensive and it kind of needs to be managed. So we send it out to people to actually test remotely and to do kind of much more insightful kind of data gathering. But then again, I think even when you get to this stage, once you've run through your prototypes and once you've had, oh, once you've had that meeting, sorry, Becky. All right. Once you've had that meeting internally, um, ask yourself again, what does good look like? What have you created and how does that align to um, the KPIs that you've kind of mapped earlier? Think about how does it actually align to what your users want? Don't pursue, don't sort of assume what your users want, but actually work on the knowledge and the insights that you've gathered kind of earlier. I think you need to be very focused as well, so only test a few elements at a time. A lot of people take an approach that the whole page is wrong. Well, we don't know that the whole page is wrong, so let's just break it down with the bits that people kind of aren't using. And actually, let's just take a step back in everything that you do with UX, take a step back and kind of go to the beginning. Um, and again, just think, implement one change at a time so that you can be quick, agile and kind of low cost. <laughs>